What's up, everybody? It's me, E-Man, from E-Man's Movie Reviews, and I am here to talk about Season 1, Episode 4 of From. So whether you have binged the series or if you are coming back just to catch the things that you missed, you're in the right place right now. Last time we left off, Sarah is still nuts, okay? She's out here letting people die in the clinic and all of that, trying to put it on the monsters. And then Frank, ah, poor Frank, we got to pour one out for him. Uh, my man just, uh, uh, yeah, that was rough. That was rough to watch. Uh, we also have Julie making that bold decision of uh, staying with the uh, uh, colony house rather than the town with her family. So without further ado, let's jump into this episode. We start off with a flashback of young Victor climbing out of a cellar. As he walks out, there are several dead and mutilated bodies laying around. We jump forward into the current time with Julie waking up to find old Victor drawing her while she sleeps. Trudy then asks her for her pillow back and Julie realizes that this girl is a whole klepto and took her clothes. Okay, so judging by Victor's uh, lunchbox, because, you know, they did kind of freeze frame on that a little bit and close in on that. um, It's possible that he's been there since the 70s, maybe. Maybe. Um, but how he's been able to survive is a major question at this point in the story. But I think a bigger question is why has he been able to survive all this time? Um, but his story apparently is going to unravel as the story progresses. Now, I'm not going to lie, uh, but I'm kind of glad that Julie got this nice little wake up call, so to speak. You know, it's one thing to think that you grown and you capable of making all these decisions. Right. But it's another thing to actually go through life and learn the impact of your decisions after the fact. Right. And now she's got to learn how to adjust to these new uh, house rules. Boyd has to clean up Frank's body and takes him over to the priest for burial. Jim and Ethan head over to the diner for breakfast. Jade shows Kenny the place where he saw the crushed body under the boulder and the symbol he saw on the ceiling. Kenny doesn't really believe him. Back at the diner, Ethan gets some pancakes for breakfast. While Jim goes to the bathroom to cry for a moment, Victor comes in to talk to Ethan. He told him that the trees have moved four inches. And he also confirms that the boy in white is the same boy that Ethan saw. Jim catches Victor with Ethan and threatens him to stay away from his son. So one, a couple of things here. Um, we got to learn a little bit more about Jade. So we learned that he had his own software company and that, you know, he's probably one of those Silicon Valley tech guys or whatever. Um, but I think that what we're supposed to grab from this is more so how he thinks, right? Um, he admitted to taking a lot of drugs, right? <laughs> you know, so he, he's been high. He knows he, he can get around a little bit. But um, I get the impression that this is really to tell us that he's also a pretty logical thinker also. Uh, so once reality kind of sets in and he stops thinking this is some escape room or whatever, um, I think that's when he'll be able to think a little clearer about things. Okay, so I think Victor might be on to something here with the whole trees moving and all that. I mean, he's noticing that the trees have moved six inches um, from where they were before. But if the trees are moving, then maybe that could explain why and how people keep getting lost in this weird town. I mean, we have seen this faraway tree and everybody has seen the fallen tree, so... Maybe the portal or something inside these faraway trees, like, opened up some way, somehow? I I don't know. Now, as for uh, Victor and Jim's interaction, I think that it's pretty obvious that the show is trying to play off of uh, what most people are assuming, right? I mean, you see a grown man talking to a little boy like that. It's not a good look, okay, no matter how you want to explain it. So Jim's reaction to Victor does seem very reasonable at this point. Now, here's something else for you to consider. Victor confirmed with Ethan that the boy in white was real. Now, why is that important? Because in other words, prior to this moment, 
Victor was under the impression that the boy in white might have been a figment of his imagination or maybe even a dream of some sort. He didn't think that the boy was real. So that also could mean that all this time, the boy in white has not appeared to anyone else in the town except for Victor that we know of, right? Like we don't know if someone else saw him and just kept it to themselves. But for as far as we can tell right now, Victor is the only one that has seen the boy in white before Ethan showed up. So I think one of the questions it kind of makes you want to ask is, are there other things that Victor thought were fake or, you know, part of his imagination, but in fact were actually real. Now let's kind of go back to Ethan. I'm going to just say this. Ethan has a very (laughs) interesting habit of potentially saying things that matter far more than we suspect. So if you are a first time watcher of this series, I want you to pay attention to everything Ethan says. Okay. And if you are a returning watcher, if you've already binged everything and you coming back, Keep watching until the end of this video because I got something that we need to talk about with Ethan and you don't want to miss that. Julie is having a hard time adjusting. Fatima talks her through her issues until Tabitha comes to talk to her daughter. Julie starts to get very frustrated and calls out her mom for keeping the secret about their divorce. So, you know, I think that like now seeing this interaction with Julie and Tabitha that it it seems like, you know, her decision to go to the Colony House is it's feeling more like an act of rebellion rather than her just wanting her freedom. Right. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut her some slack because divorce is something that's really hard on families, especially kids. Right. And, you know, granted, Julie kind of went with a little bit of a low blow. I mean, talking about Thomas like that, I was like, dang, girl, like you ain't have to go there with it. Like, ooh, you know, and and I think at this point we can assume that Thomas is the child that Tabitha and, and Jim probably lost. But sitting here saying that, like, you know, uh, you you have two kids and why isn't that enough? Ugh, geez, that that right there, I think, demonstrated that Julie is still just a kid, right? Because whenever you are dealing with divorce or the death of a child, it's way more complicated than that for the parents. It's not like, oh, it's cool. You know, we have other kids, so eh, we're fine. So I know it's actually really tough on Julie to see her parents like really, you know, go through this divorce and all that. But I also know it's really tough on Tabitha and obviously Jim too, because Tabitha, in this case, she doesn't want her family to get even further broken apart. I mean, she's already got her daughter living with a bunch of weirdos and stuff. So, you know, this is definitely going to be even more of a toll on her. But you guys let me know. What do you think about this situation within the family dynamic? Kenny and Jay talk about various locations from where people originally came from before they got into the town. The radio starts to flicker on and off. Tabitha and Jim start to argue outside. Victor comes to the back of the house and wants to talk to Ethan. He tells him that they have to go out and find the boy in white. So they go head off into the woods. So Kenny told Jade that like, you know, here were all the locations from, you know, the various places everyone came from. Now, I am still under the impression that the locations of where they came from probably has some significance i mean let's think about it this show is called from so you know where you're from might actually be a factor now i personally haven't found any correlation or anything as to the locations and the dates of where they came from and if there's a pattern there maybe there is but i haven't seen it yet but i got a question here you mean to tell me don't nobody else come into this town that ain't from america like you mean out of all these because you notice all them pins were only in the usa nobody even from mexico y'all ain't got no canadians nothing nobody no international travelers what is going on with the u.s that this is where this little weird bermuda triangle fallen tree is happening now we also have jade noticing uh the radio going on and off And uh, that sparked an idea for him, but we will get to that later on in the season. You know, and I also like um, what Kenny ended up saying here, too. And he was like, yeah, 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 look, 
The monsters are a problem, but what you really have to worry about is what this place is going to do to you mentally, right? And I, that a number of thoughts and decisions are going to have to cross your mind living in a place like this. I mean, honestly, I don't even know how people sleep at night in this place. Because, I mean, my worst fear, if I were in the town or whatever, my worst fear would be falling asleep in my house or whatever, or maybe in the colony house, and all of a sudden waking up to one of them smiley things just watching over me just while I wake up, and I have no clue how they got in there. I don't know if somebody dropped my talisman. I don't know if these monsters, you know, found some super duper powers and they could get past it. I don't know. But all I know is that right there would scare me every night. I would I'd probably I'd probably just sleep during the day. I don't know. Now, going back to Ethan, I'm not even mad at him at this point for going off with Victor. You know why? Because this, I'm going to put on Jim and Tabitha as parents. And I'm going to judge them from one parent to another parent. Uh, these kids, they just be doing anything. You got Julie going off to another house. You got Ethan walking off with some strange old man that he just found. You ain't never take you, you never taught him stranger danger? You ain't never teach him none of that stuff? No, 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 no. These kids are lacking home training, so I'm not even mad at them. I'm looking at Julie and Jim right now. Now, last thing to consider here. Victor also mentioned that the boy in white chose him a long time ago. So now this evokes the question, why was Victor chosen? And also, what was Victor chosen to do? If you got any ideas, let me know. Father Kotri tells Boyd that he needs to stop feeling sorry for himself. He says that Boyd has to be the strong one here because this chaos is going to take a toll on the town. Victor and Ethan go for a walk in the woods. Victor doesn't want to talk about how he got there or his past. They did see the boy in white walking throughout the woods. They come across a faraway tree and Victor demonstrates how objects or people can enter in the tree, but where they end up is anyone's guess. Jim and Tabitha finally realize that Ethan is gone and go into the woods to find him. Two stray dogs come near them and Victor shoots a gun to scare them off. So I think um, from these scenes, first thing was it was really interesting to find out that Boyd was the one that actually found the talisman uh, and brought them into town. But we'll get to that a little bit later for you first timers. Now, as for these faraway trees, though, these things are wild. Um, I don't know their deal per se, uh, but I do wonder how they're going to play a role moving forward. I mean, let's remember that Victor observed that the trees have been moving. And if you also recall, one of our ongoing clues is that everyone has seen a fallen tree before getting trapped in this town. Did a fallaway tree fall and open the portal or something? I don't know, but... If you have any ideas, please let me know. Now, something else we have to think about is Victor seemed traumatized when he heard the dogs. Um, now, judging by the flashbacks, that's got to be connected to his past in some way, shape or form. But where did these dogs come from? Um, they were around when Victor was a kid. And everyone around him was all killed in whatever massacre happened. But dogs don't live that long, like given the fact that he was a kid and now he like grown, grown. So if dogs don't live that long and the dogs were apparently around back then, I mean, keep in mind, he also saw the boy in white walking away and the dogs were around there at the same time. So are the dogs like ghosts or something? Eh, maybe. I don't know. But for those of you that are all caught up all the way with season two, I got something else to share with you. So again, make sure you stay to the end of this video. Jim tells Boyd about the pictures Victor drew for Ethan and that Victor carries a loaded gun. Boyd gives himself a fresh haircut and joins the Matthews for dinner. Meanwhile, Sarah starts to freak out as a bloody engraving is placed on her arm saying to kill the boy. She collapses and has a seizure. Back at the colony house, Ellis and Fatima give Julie her own bed in their room. Outside, Victor is seen digging up multiple graves to get a head start on the impending doom. You know, I gotta say, I thought it was actually kind of funny uh, to see Boyd getting all dressed up, putting on a happy face, giving himself a fresh cut. 
and then just screaming in the mirror, right? Um, but I think it's also symbolic of the way of life in this town. I mean, if you really think about it, you have to kind of force yourself to act and and try to act normal in the midst of all this madness. <laughs> Okay, so we got to talk about Sarah. At this point, whatever is interacting with her, they are doing a number on her. I mean, this is the point where I'm like, okay, I'm a little bit more confused as to what's actually going on with Sarah. First, she's hearing voices that's telling her to go kill people and stuff like that. Then she's actually seeing things on her arm, you know. And by the way, I do not believe or subscribe to the belief that those are worms in her arms i think that they were literally just i think it was a vision for one but it was just whatever's interacting with her they were just kind of showing her an actual message now she did also fall right back into a seizure and the last time we saw a seizure was from ethan and that was right when the monsters were walking out in the first or second episode so it is possible that maybe the monsters are contacting Sarah and that triggered, I don't know, a similar seizure. I mean, the better question is, are we sure that it's even the monsters that are talking to her or making her do these things? Also, why would these voices or whatever is behind this stuff, why would they specifically want Ethan to be killed? Could Ethan actually be a threat to them? I don't know, but you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, guys, so this is the point where I'm going to have to give you a couple of clues that I think you're going to have to remember for the series overall. Um, so first off, we have the radio playing at random times. Um, now, at first, we thought that maybe it was just at nightfall, but apparently these radios will go off at any given time. Is there a trigger for it? Not really sure yet, but we got to pay attention to that because clearly this means something. Second clue, and this is something that Victor brought up. He talked about the first two cars that came around a long time ago. Um, now, when Victor was about Ethan's age, this is when that happened. And there's something about this whole two car situation that seems like a real anomaly. It seems like it's very special. So it's not something we should like disregard or whatever. Something is very important about this occurrence when two cars come into the town, because I'm assuming it's really one car at a time that comes. But to have two cars coming in, that means something. All right. Now, as for the rating of this uh, episode, um, I think that, you know, this episode was pretty mellow. Um you know, maybe it's the calm before the storm, but when it comes to the rating, I think I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of 10. It's still pretty good, but it's slowly peeling away and adding to the mystery as it goes, but nothing mind blowing has happened. So thank you first and foremost, for those of you first time watchers that are watching, this is the point where I'm going to get into some spoiler territory. So again, if you are a first time watcher, if you haven't even watched the rest of the season, this is the point where I need you to kind of dip off because us bingers and the people that have all caught up, I got to talk to y'all for a second. So take this as your spoiler alert. Okay, you still here? All right, cool. Now, I told you guys before that Ethan is incredibly important to this whole series. In the diner earlier in this episode, Ethan talked about how um, he was going on a quest or that they were doing a quest, but he might have just given away like the plot for the entire show. Um, maybe everyone here, you know, has to save someone or save some people in order to really go home. Uh, who they have to save or what they have to save, I don't know. Um, might have to be something we think about as this series goes on. So Ethan is talking about a quest. A quest means you got to save people. We got to put two or two together somewhere. All right, the next thing we got to talk about are the dogs. The dogs are probably really important because we see them pop up a couple of times. I get the impression that the dogs are actually good and not bad. 
They've actually been helping Boyd a lot, and it's not like they attack anyone. But here's the interesting thing. The now, maybe these dogs are kind of like ghosts or whatever that the boy in white is, right? Like, maybe they're the same thing. If that's the case, it makes sense that Ethan and Victor would notice these dogs, right? Because Ethan and Victor are clearly connected to this place in some way, shape, or form. However, notice in this scene that both Tabitha and Jim also see the dogs. So I think that this could be maybe the first signs that Jim and Tabitha are also connected to this place. Now, Tabitha, as we know later on, she does start to see some things. So maybe sooner or later, Jim is also going to start seeing some things too. Then again, Jim did hear that voice on the radio later on. So there's that. Now, there's something else I'm going to throw out there. And this is a very loose theory. So don't take this with a lot. You know, take this with a grain of salt. But I do wonder if like, you know, this has to do with Victor. And again, I could totally be wrong, but I just wonder if time works a little bit differently here in some way, shape or form. I mean, I think it's clear that Victor's on the spectrum of some sort, right? Like he has some autistic, you know, uh, um, qualities to him. But I also wonder if maybe he's just grown up very fast in this place and his mind is just stuck. Like, in other words, he's still... A, a a man child right like he's still a child in a man's body i mean from what i recall donna is one of the few people that has been there for a while she's been there for three years you know and it's kind of like you know they said victor was there the longest what does that even mean you know but anyway i was also thinking about uh ethan when ethan had his wound and look at him he walking ethan had a whole pole sticking out his leg and then miraculously, his wound is like healing really quickly and he's even able to walk. So I'm just wondering if maybe time is sped up a little bit um, and you wouldn't notice it like in the adults because, you know, <laughs> most of them don't live that long anyway. But, um, you know, we also don't see a lot of kids here. You know, so I do wonder, is that just kind of a thing that could be a factor to consider? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoy these type of videos, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so you know exactly when I drop a new video for you before you leave. Feel free to go check out some of my other interviews that I've done with the cast. I do have more videos coming up with the cast members that, you know, I listen, we, we talk about some interesting things and you don't want to miss it. But uh, yeah, continue watching. I promise you there's going to be more interesting things that I'm going to bring up in the future stuff in the future videos that I know for a fact you didn't think about i know for a fact you didn't so stay tuned and again thank you so much for watching this was just a segment of one of my live chats and if you're interested in joining in on the next one be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more i've got more videos and reviews to do for you all and until next time i'll see you all later